can't read this. Hello boys and girls. Recently a lot of events have happened that may have been missed by the casual observer. By casual observer, I mean you, of course. Let me run them by you. First off, a taxi driver launched a petition to remove Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong from office. Second, five 17-year-olds were caught for vandalism for anti-PAP graffiti on a HDB rooftop. And do you know what happened on May Day? But I want to make sure that all Singaporeans who work hard, who require must expect the money back. Come back, 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 come I zoned out when the angry man was talking. Now, I mean, I haven't paid attention to all three of these events, and neither have you, and it's for a very simple reason. I'm pretty sure many of you think this has a lot to do with how the mainstream media has reported on these events. I mean, the mainstream media is biased and silences anti-government views. Look at the petition, they didn't even report on that at all. As for the graffiti, instead of focusing on how it was directed against the ruling party, they went instead with this bullshit. On Wednesday, graffiti was found along the rooftop of Block 85A at Lo uh, Toapayo Lorong 4. My view on uh, vandalism, that's a no-no, definitely. Because you should respect common property. You should respect what is, uh, you know, other, what other people, uh, areas that other people live in and, and what they see. And as for the May Day protests, let's listen to what this guy has to say. Are you zero No! Are you No! Because every time we have a protest, or every time we don't agree to the population white paper, or any time we don't agree to the PAP policies, we are all zero focus and BS. Wait a minute, that's not true. The news didn't call these people crazy racist psychopaths. The news said that the speaker's main interest lay in protecting Singapore workers. So the news isn't that bad? Then why didn't people care? Well, maybe it's because the message itself may have put people off already. We are here to get together to make, try to make a change in our uh, people's life here in Singapore and to kick all the foreigners out. No to 6.9 million people. Woo! Xenophobia. And of course, who can forget the kids who wrote the PAP? All right, all right. I'll just show you the picture. But perhaps the problem has to do with how people express their views. Graffiti is commonly dismissed as vandalism, and vandalism is wrong. I think you just anger a bit more Singaporeans, given the way, like, I mean, we are. We are quite ordered, right? We don't really fancy all these graffitis and stuff like that. You're wrong there, boys. I draw on my walls all the time. But go on. My first opinion was that if you want to like come with such extreme responses, right, you'll definitely be like a negative, uh, you'll be seen negatively. If you use such extreme ways, right, the government will definitely think like, oh, you're being unreasonable and stuff. If you have a viewpoint that you wish to express, there, means, there are ways and means of expressing it. You do not have to damage property to do that. And I guess that's really it. Content aside, it's about the presentation that confuses people. For instance, if I go, We really need likes for this video, guys! No one's going to listen to me, and you all think I'm just another screaming idiot. But really, we really need likes like this video. And as for the media protests, well, I'll let this intelligent man sum it up. They did it not by wearing uh, Teenage Ninja scarves around their heads and declaring war on the Philippines and this sort of stuff which gets into the papers and gets you reported all over the world but doesn't actually achieve anything. Bright dude, isn't he? Enlightening. But he did raise an important point. What is to be achieved from all of this petition, pain, protest? Does activism need to take on an appealing form? To find out, we ask our guest star, Dr. Vincent Wijesinger. All forms of public activism uh, are oriented towards uh, people's uh, thinking, people's views, uh, and the general uh, 
uh, amount of knowledge in a society, right? Because all social progress depends on knowledge. The real place where democracy operates uh, is at the level of public discourse. Public activism of any kind, particularly where ideas are discussed, new information shared, uh, for me is uh, the kind of birthing place of uh, so social change. Well, um, civility is not the greatest test of uh, 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 whether something is uh, worthwhile. Sometimes, especially in the political arena, uh, you come into con uh, people come into conflict because of different ideas, yeah. and they can become so conflictual that you know tempers are raised, uh, civility goes out the window. I don't think there's a problem with that, and the truth can be a difficult thing to accept. All of us are so stuck in our own. Our worldviews, our own value systems, our own preferred ways of being, that uh, when you're confronted with new uh, inputs, it's very easy to, uh, uh, to resist those inputs. Well, let's question our terms. Now. Firstly, it was totally peaceful. No one was hurt, right? That's true. So we must be careful about how we approach these uh, activities. Certainly graffiti is an uncomfortable thing. It's not pretty to begin with, yeah. right? But as a political tool, my uh, uh, sense or my position is not so much whether graffiti is bad or whether a protest is bad or whether a march is bad or whatever, but to question why people feel that they have been pushed into a, a place where they have to break the law, where they have to uh, uh, use anti-social means to get their message across. Because the method is unacceptable or anti-social doesn't mean that the objective is uh, uh, not, uh, uh, or, or rather doesn't mean that the impulse that generates this behaviour is itself wrong as well. Public activism should never be a reaction, right? Uh, it should always be an action uh, oriented to certain values. Public activism must start from first principles and to me the first principle must always be vested in, the, in human dignity. My speech at the event that you're referring to, I talked about patient, meticulous work. Yes. It's far more uh, viable in the long term when you are able to do that sort of work uh, rather than the, uh, the kind of behaviour that attracts a lot of media attention but may not have an impact on the person you're trying to talk to. There is never a utopia. There's always only uh, uh, incremental change. That's all for today, folks. We'll see you next episode. Where is Muna anyway? She's not free lah. I don't know what all this ruckus about that you guys are trying to make with the Filipinos. You're just bitter and upset. <laughs>